But again, who is leading this effort? What is the plan? Right? Is is you know the audience seems 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 um, to me like a scattered gun approach. So you know, let's start. Hi right, guys, welcome to Ready Football Show. Today we're talking transfers. I have with me the regular and uh, very familiar, like uh, Boom said, voices on, on show today. Chama will be joining us, like she said, she'll be here 15, 20 minutes late. So I have, uh, let me start with, uh, of course, you guys already know Boom. He's a regular on this show. Ubum, welcome to the show. Any word for our viewers? What yeah, you right, say? I said, welcome to the show. Any word for our viewers? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, It's a pleasure again to be on Transit TV. Uh, with some really esteemed gentlemen uh, this afternoon, evening, what time, whatever time you're listening to us, uh, welcome to, to the show. We look forward to, as usual, very robust, interesting, uh, you know, discussions around uh, the, the beautiful game called football. Uh, again, please, as you listen to us, go ahead and uh, press the subscribe button if you haven't done that already. Um, and join us, join us, we build uh, this this channel and continue to get more people to listen to it share with your friends let's keep enjoying yeah richard good to see you back again Likewise. as they popularly, popularly said uh, back again back on the show back on transit tv back on yeah. uh ready transfer talk it's good to mm -hmm. see you our viewers are asking, asking for for you they really liked your your appearance the last time it's oh. good to yeah, good to have you. I'm really happy to be here again. Um, uh, hello, everybody. Um, looking forward to the show. Yeah, then uh, of course, one and only, like you already said, Chima. Good to have you back on the show. Thank you, viewers, and thank you, my um, um, team members. Uh, my name is Chima, and a very loyal and uh, diehard Chelsea fan. I kind of. I want to thank the host for Transit TV for inviting me, and in today's episode, I, I also feel like I am, I'm in the lion's den, <laughs> but I can always hold my side. Thank you, sir. Yes. yes. Uh, good, uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, let, let's start from you, Chima. It's all right. Let me not be like, uh, oh, Chima is here. Chima is here. <laughs> let's let's get her to join. Then we we move. Is having that audio. Hey, Okay, so let's let's start. Why we wait for her to? Oh, Chama, you're there, right on time. We're about to start. Hi. Yeah, good to have you back on the show. Our viewers uh, have been having good uh, feedback on your past few appearances. So good to have you back on the show. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, viewers. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be back today. Yeah, good to see you. So, Chima, uh, Chima we're going to start from Chelsea today. At the end of the season, last season, there was so much in fact, there was there was so much talk and fears about how Chelsea was going to deal with uh, what one of my friends calls a warehouse. So Chelsea, Chelsea had a warehouse of uh, of players over forty five senior team members in your squad. Uh, for me, I'm not going to lie. I was like, it's going to take Chelsea like two three seasons to clean out the mess that they have. You know, they've acquired in their in their club, but. So far in the transfer window, it looks like they're doing a very good job of clearing the warehouse. Uh, though, yeah. though for me, I feel having known Pochettino, I think he's he's trying to get rid of the older players. Probably he's focused on working with the young players. So, Chima, uh, as a Chelsea fan, what's your impression on that side of things with with Chelsea? Um, thank you, um, the moderator, for having me. I must sincerely tell you that uh, as a Chelsea fan, I am very pleased. You know, I'm very happy with the the in-house clear, clear, clearance that we are doing. I am particularly pleased of the fact that 
players like um, players that I have always believed that their presence in the team is making our coaches and our you know the board feel like they have players. Someone like Kai, I feel like Kai has no place. Kai Havers, I feel like he has no place in Chelsea's team. I feel like Kai, as a player, presents an image where we feel like we have a striker. He is not a striker. He is not a midfielder. He is not a what, as an old soccer player, what we believe, what we call a left uh, forward or right forward player. Sometimes when I look at Kai Havers, I wonder what exactly his position. When I look at him, in, you know, I've, I've always told people that the German, if you look at German national team team today, since they start having, they hardly qualify to semi-finals of games or competitions these days. It's because of Kai. You know, Kai's presence in that team, just watch Germany. This is the only time you can hardly see German national team get to semi-finals of any competition. You know, you he is not, his first touch, you, you give him, his first touch is defective. He's flawed. You know, Players like M M M Messi Mouse, I see Messi Mouse as our Lampard, Lampard coming back to Chelsea. But at the point, I felt like he lost hope. Is it motivation? He lacked motivation. He, the, a whole lot of things went wrong with him and he was not able to live up to the Messi Mount that we had in mind that is replacing Lampard. We, you have players like, um, even um, this Senegalese player that we bought, you know, when we got this player, I felt like, God, that this... Um, Koulibaly. Koulibaly. But Koulibaly came and it became, it seems like he, you know, the same disease, the same illness that, you know, before the other people. Look at our own Captain America, Poli Polisic. Polisic. In fact, when I look at these players, these are players that, you know, I had hope and... I had praises for, but these days when I see them, I just get confused. I don't know what their intentions are, what their motivations are. You know, I'm very pleased of uh, Christian Kuku that we, we, we got. I trust the new coach. I trust uh, Poch. Poch is an experienced English, when I say English coach, a, an experienced in premiership coach. He knows what he's doing. So I believe in him. And I believe in his philosophy. I thank us now for taking a uh, car and let's see what they do with Carl Nelson this coming season. <laughs> so, Chama, let me go to you. I see you're making some uh, gestures as he was talking. Now, from my own understanding, we've all watched this league in a long time. It's always said that for a team to win EPL, at least 70% of the team have to be together for at least two seasons before they can really make a big impact in the league most times. So the, the dimension that the direction that Chelsea is going, it looks like they want to work with almost a new team. And okay. they are out of the top four, in fact, top ten this last season. So do you think the, the way they are they are going about it, getting rid of the unquote old, what I mean by old, the players have been there for a little bit and looks like they're going to go the direction of entirely a new team. Do you think it's going to help Chelsea to compete in the league, the top end of the league, the, the, the coming season? Okay, so um, I'm going to start from talking about Mauricio Pochettino's um, strategy. Um, with what he did with Tottenham, we know he's a builder. He builds. He knows how to build from the scratch. He made almost all the Tottenham players. They are very beautiful today because of Pochettino's impact. So I see that as a strategy he's bringing into Chelsea. It's trying to boot out the old players. Players are not good enough, you know. And secondly, thank you, Chima, for pointing out that, you know, we took um, Kai away from you guys. That's because Kai is a better person and you people can't utilize him in a way that you should, okay? You don't know how to use Kai Harvest. We're going to make Kai Harvest a Jeru, I promise you. We're going to utilize him in a way that he can play every wing, name it, whatever you want him to do. And we're going to make him a super sub. And it's so funny how Chelsea fans are always like very, very, you know, not nice when it comes to these beautiful players they have. 
Chelsea have actually fielded very beautiful players. Look at Christian Pulisic. I mean, come on, you guys. That guy is fine. He came all the way from America. He was in another team and he was doing just fine. And now you are telling us that he's, he's, he's bad. The same thing you said about Giorgio. When we came for Giorgio, my, my Chelsea friends are like, oh, please, please, take, 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 take. We don't even need him. All of a sudden, he comes and he's a whisperer in the middle midfielder and a very beautiful midfielder. And all of them were like, okay, fine, we're going to keep quiet. So I don't even understand what the, the whole um, you know, talk is. I mean, the same players you guys are booting out are the same people that took you to your... I mean, come on. Seriously, what's happening? Believe me, if you guys actually... If you would con consult Mourinho at this moment, he would tell you that you guys are making a very big mistake. But, you know, I'm very happy that you guys are actually selling to, you know, rival clubs and it's for the best. So that's what I think. Okay, yeah, Richard, uh, just like... Let me take it off when we had Chama uh, stop. Where does coaching come into the issue Chelsea is having with the players? Do you think that there, there's an issue with coaching as against these players not being good enough or being motivated enough? I mean, uh, for Pep to come for a player like Kovacic, it means there's a player in there. Ateta, in the last three years since has been in Arsenal, if you check all the buys he has done, I don't think he has... Less than I don't think more than twenty percent of his signings have you know have not lived up to expectation. He took uh, Kai Havertz, he took Jorginho, and okay, we know the things go going on in in Dubai with Chelsea. So do, does it do, do you feel probably Chelsea there's a problem with coaching and style of play in Chelsea that is affecting that made those players not be productive as 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 it were? What's your impression? I don't think. Um... I don't think Chelsea's issue last season was an issue of coaching. Uh, I, I think that the, the major issue was the new owners. You know, they're new to football. They don't know anything about professional football. Clear Lake Capital have no experience of European football. So to come in and expect them to sort of um, be successful off the bat is, is is wishful thinking. I even believe that Chelsea made, the initial error they made was sacking um, Tuchel. I think that was a major error. They just, I think what they did was they, they, they took over, fell out with Tuchel about how the club was going to be run and just decided that, look, we're not having it. We don't want an employee that's unhappy with us. And they made a decision and it was the wrong decision. Um, Regarding, so I don't think it's an issue of coaching. Also, personally, I believe that what is happening at Chelsea today is still a continuation of the haphazard running of the club. Because when you think about it, they didn't want to allow M Mason Mount leave that club. They didn't want him to go. But it was almost like, well, because of all the players we've bought, we need to balance these books somehow. So a lot of these players that have got, there's, there's no rhyme or reason about, uh, about how Chelsea players are leaving that club. At the mo to my mind, what's happening is it's almost like, well, the players that we can, we can, we can let go, the players that we can, we can find uh, buyers for, we will allow them go. There doesn't seem to be any... Because, okay, even if you look at somebody like N'Golo Kante, who's like one of my favorite players of all time, I see no reason why, because he's been injured for one season, he's been in and out of the team because of injuries, you're now allowing him go. You're allowing Kovacic, you're allowing Kante go at the same time, one or the other, as it is now. Um... They don't have a player that, that has been sort of um, um, an experienced senior midfielder that is, that is in that team. They're selling Mount, they're selling Kovacic, they're selling Kante at the same time. What, what, well, I, 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 I also believe that, that um, it would have been worse if um, somebody like Pochettino was not coming in because at least Pochettino like other people have said, he has 
Premier League experience. I mean, he's taken a Premier League club to the Champions League final. He's finished, I think, um, at least in the top three on at least three occasions when he was Tottenham manager. So he has experience, but I don't think he has much say in the players that are leaving Chelsea at the moment, personally. Because I've also read somewhere else that, like I said before, he didn't want Mount to go. Um, Kovacic went because, like I said, they're balancing books. Kante went, they're balancing books. Kulibale went, they're balancing, balancing books. And it's almost like we had this discussion, um, you and me, Reggie, we had this discussion a couple of days ago, and I was saying it's almost like what they've decided is uh, we'll have the uh, uh, um, first in, first out. If you notice, the players that are leaving are the players that have been there the longest. It doesn't seem to have much to do with performance. Kovacic was was arguably Chelsea's best midfielder this this past season. So, like I said, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. Good luck to them. Yeah. I don't care about Chelsea. Yeah, I think uh, I agree with most of the things that you've said. But the problem I the only thing I disagree with you a little bit is I wasn't sure about Toko. If you remember very well, before last season that he was fired, half of the season prior to that one, Chelsea was in a decline. Just didn't do well in the league. They were losing games. There was already there were already cracks in the you know on the wall. And the reason why I mentioned coaching is regardless of what's going on, what's going on outside the pitch. I mean, you've been there. You know the players that you use. You can if you know how to get results. So just already in terms of results, forget about the new owners. They were already they were, not, they were already in a decline under Tuko. So you can imagine they invested. 120 million or 100 million on Lukaku. And he, he couldn't just play the guy. He couldn't just use him. And the next thing is he was sent back on loan to the same team that you bought him from. For me, that was a very, very big, you know, trans bad transfer deal right there. Because in time, Milan just took 100 million from you and it, it got 10, 10 million back on one year service. Now, Chess is locked in the dilemma of selling Lukaku back to Inter Milan. And I know Inter is going to be pricing them maybe 50 million. So at the end of the day, you were just, I don't understand what that deal was about. So I, I believe Tuku had a hand to do, you know, in what's going on in Chelsea. And like you rightly said, of course, the owners are inexperienced in, in EPA. But we can sit down here and say that inexperienced. Before they go through the, the process of acquiring Chelsea, I'm sure there was some, there were, there's going to be a lot of groundwork done. There's going to be a lot of research and stuff like that. So a, and there should be a plan. And for somebody to grow into the level of being a billionaire in business, they understand the basics of business. Football is a business. You know, so, they, yeah. So, Chelsea's problem for me is, is a lot. But I'm not going to lie. I'm a, a little bit surprised at, at the pace at which they are being able to, like, get things clear, their warehouse. But what I don't, I don't know. Is if the players, like you said, they're doing uh, five four, first in, first out. I don't know if the players that they are leaving behind are going to be able to carry the team because it looks like, like you rightly said, in the midfield they're going to have a whole brand new midfield. There's going to be time for them to gel and stuff like that. So let's, let's watch and see how they're going to go from there. Although I know last time we had an. Uh, argument about the value Chelsea is getting in their players. I believe personally that Chelsea have done well in the prices they have sold their players so far. If if you put the numbers together, they are about to raise over 250 million or about that from the from player sales in the last two, three weeks. And I believe that this is a very, very good job they have done in that in that area. Messi Mount, one year contract, 60 million. Can have a 65 million to ask now. Cover which I think 30 million. And they have the another three, four players, Mendy, Kulibali, and uh Kante. ZH just fell the medical. So that transfer has been put up. So you look at the resume over. Sorry? Lofton Chick. And then Lofton Chick is going to AC Milan for I think 15 or 20 million. <coughs> so they're 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 raising some some quite some money from these sales. What do you think about that? Yeah, man. <clears throat> As you guys were, were were talking, I I heard a lot of things, and my mind was just going around uh, Chelsea. 
Let me take a few minutes and think of what's going on in my mind regarding Chelsea Football Club. Now, I am I support Arsenal, but I'll keep my Arsenal fanhood aside and kind of um, analyze what I've uh, I've heard, and then I'll answer the, the, your question. You know, a few years ago, uh, Abramovich took over that took over Chelsea. Prior to that, I lived in London for maybe three months or so. And I have Chelsea friends. That was before Abramovich took over. Chelsea were not really winning much. But the man came in and changed the whole culture. Now, I'm talking about culture. I'm talking about the way that the club ran, and the way they carried themselves. And I believe that perhaps a quarter of the fans that started supporting Chelsea adopted that culture, right? Those fans were not Chelsea fans before the success started coming. Now, it was a culture of performance, performance and results. Winning trophies, it's either you win or you're out of the door, right? Either you win a trophy or you're out of the door. Either you perform in the team that wins the trophy or you're out and you're immediately replaced. But one thing that I realized was that Abramovich, in addition to pumping a lot of money into the club, hired some very brilliant people. One of them being Michael Emenalo, right? Nigerian guy. Um, and the likes of Martina, Maria, Marie, some lady Marie, and all that. Marie Nancek. Yeah. What Michael Emenalo did in that club, actually, till today, they are benefiting from it. He started the academy. He built the academy to the level where they recruited the best talents around the UK and beyond, especially around the UK. You see most of the people playing for Chelsea. Now, the problem was that at, at the time, because of the drive for trophies only, um, those talents didn't have a pathway into the first team. Remember, what forced Chelsea to stop playing these guys was the, the pandemic. When they could no longer spend the kind of money and rules and all those things came the in. Trafab, Trafab the band, they had. The band. Yeah, the band the, thank you. The transfer ban, exactly. The band, yes. Now, forced them to play, start playing most of these boys. I watched their youth, I, you know, because I watch a lot of football. I watched their youth team. I don't know Chima is a Chelsea fan, but I'm not sure he watched their youth team win the youth FA Cup, which is the highest cup for youths in the UK. Right? I watched the likes of uh, Loftus Cheek, uh, uh, Rich James, um, um, trying to remember some of these uh, other boys that that we're able to win that youth cup again. And I watched it because I was watching Arsenal. They beat Arsenal silly. You know, they, they bullied Arsenal um, in, in those competitions. So now these guys found their way into the team. Uh, a lot of history happened. I mean, a lot left, you know, and then it was that culture of either you win or you move on. Again, at Chelsea at this point, a lot of people started supporting Chelsea because of those wins, because of the trophies, because of the attraction, and because it was all results, result, result, result with um, this guy. And he could get rid of people and replace them because he had the money to do it without any issues, right? Uh, Abramovich, that was his, his way of operating. He could sack a coach and hire the next best coach. But remember, that man, as much as he was doing that stuff, he was also very tactical. He always kind of hired the right people. You know, whoever did talent ID for Abramovich should be given, and I'm talking about both coaching and playing, should be given an award, right? Because he always hired coaches. And, and again, there, there, was a, there was structure, there was organization, there was thinking, though it was ruthless, right? Now, Chelsea fans that had gotten to that way of operation under Abramovich, yeah? They, they will have to realign. You know, it's either they, they realign and realize that a new sheriff is in town 
And that sheriff is not Abramovich in two ways. Number one, that sheriff is willing to give coaches a bit of time to be, to build again in a different way, right? Number two, that sheriff is not going to sack people and replace them willy-nilly with money just like uh, Abramovich did. Perhaps he's not as rich as Abramovich. And then the, there are rules now that have come into place that will prevent that from happening. So it's more, it's getting closer and closer to a level playing field than it was when Abramovich came in, right? So uh, my worry as a neutral fan, and, and I'm asking Chima, I'm looking at this, this Chelsea team now. Who wants to stay? I don't see, apart from Rhys James, perhaps, who in that squad is happy and, and willing and looking forward to playing for Chelsea and sh showing it by their body language, showing it by their uh, utterances in the press, showing it by... It looks like everybody's trying to leave. Even Caesar, as, as we later, the symbol of Chelsea for the past few years has left. You know, so if he's my club, I'm wondering, why is everybody running away? Why is everybody rushing to leave? What is going on? Who tells me that it's beyond coaching? You know, it, it tells me that the spine of the club, ownership, whatever, there is something going on that is unsettling people. Maybe a lack of direction, maybe a lack of proper communication, getting everybody in place and saying, this is how we want to go moving forward. This is who's going to lead it, right? This is the plan, right? Then... You see people buy into that, get behind that, and then they can push over. I still see, even in the recruitment, they are buying good talents. But again, who is leading this effort? What is the plan, right? Is, 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 you know, is the whole thing seems, 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 seems um, to me like a scattergun approach. So, you know, yeah, yeah so, 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 so like Chema said, you can be happy to get rid of players that didn't perform last season, but... Have you thought about the future? I mean, what is the plan for your club, right? Do you do you think, as a Chelsea fan, that you can see a clear vision of what Todd Ball is trying to do? Do you think he's hired the right people? Hey, Odu, um, sorry, let me just quickly come in because I I kind of feel like you know I'm, we are being attacked, you know. No, 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 um, Chema, please, but, I don't feel that way. <laughs> not, no, not from from Choma. I'm talking about, you know, from Choma's comment. I want to, you know, because um, to be candid with you, I, I honestly, you know, appreciated the way Odu narrated Chelsea's issue. We are used to winning. And if you're not ready to win, you leave. You know, if you're not ready, ready to put in effort, you leave. I always tell people, our problem, Chelsea's problem started with Tuchel. I believed strongly that when he was going through his marital issue or issues, that he affected his mental stability in the field of play. Reg, you will agree with me that oftentimes you will see Chelsea, during those days of Chelsea going down, the coach will sit. You don't see... If you don't see that consciousness, that tendency to want to come out and react to when, you know, a father who is losing the son or losing the child, the tendency is for you to react. But he will keep calm, even when things are not good. I tell people that Toshel might be a good coach when other coaches assemble good players. But when you give him money to go buy these players, he just buy, you know, every day, carry Tom, you know, whatever he sees on the street. Look at, look at what he did in, in um, when he came to, to um, Bayern Munich. They were just lucky. You saw what happened, you know, this season with Bayern Munich and he came in. And I want to, um, you know, I want to honestly say that some of these players that we are selling now, apart from, for me, Conte, which I feel Conte is going, 
it's not that we are not selling Conte is the living for money. I strongly believe Conte's, uh, Conte is living for money. For me, apart from Conte and Kovacic, all other players, myself and my Chelsea family, my Chelsea family, we believe that their times are up. Even um, our, um, our, our, our spirit quarter, I think he is, without this Chelsea's issue, he has served us. He is old. He probably not ready to take a year deal that at his age we normally give. You know, he just want to take his talent somewhere, which we wish him well. We're not angry with um with our you know him because you you get to a point in life when you have seen it all. There is nothing more to give. Okay, so Chima, sorry to cut you short right there. You you you're certainly the player that is sold apart from Kovacic and the uh, Conte. Kulibali came on a very, very massive uh, reputation from Napoli. And but, of course, we you know, coming from Italy, the, the, the league there is slower. There's going to be that adaptation period. He just spent one season with Chelsea. So do you think uh, he has to go as well? He's not good enough? I think, I honestly think that most of these players that are going to um, Arab leagues are going there for money. Kolibali, at a point, lost confidence in himself. I'm telling you as a Chelsea fan because, you know, when I say this, I say it sincerely because it is hurting. Kolibali lost confidence in himself as, you know, in along the season. Even Captain America was one of our best players, but at a point, he lost that confidence in himself. I even want to tell Choma, Choma, let me read this thing for you. This is, I picked this thing from our Chelsea forum. When you know when you see Arsenal, Arsenal supporters, when they, they there is something that uh, somebody will say that um I don't know if you if you all know Chris Matthew, there is a there is this MSNBC commentator they call Chris Matthew. You probably if you've been following Obama politics, immediately Obama came to the scene and made that his speech of uh, we are not white. You know there is no white uh, red America, there is no blue America, there is United States of America. People started saying that that Chris Matthew forgot that he was an uh, an anal analyst and started having tingling about Obama. He fell in love with Obama. For those of for just um, Arsenal fans that are having tinglings in their legs, let me read this for you. Let me read it. This is from my Chelsea's uh, forum. Arsenal never learned. We gave them a uh, check after we won uh, Champions League. He helped them. Bottle European League. We gave them David Lewis, who ended up getting more than red cards that that has never that has been gotten in Arsenal in the history of Arsenal. We gave them Williams. We gave uh, uh, Arsenal Williams. Williams turned out to be Ayebene in Arsenal in Arsenal clothes. We gave you guys uh, Jojiho. Jojiho came just three match to Arsenal. He dropped Arsenal from top to bottom. We gave you guys um. Kai Harvest now. So you all think that these people that that we when we look at them, it's like one of the reasons I like Moriho. If Moriho tell you that this person is finished, look at that person. That person is truly finished. Don't be happy so much with Kai Harvest because even Jojiho that you claim that we gave you, you really think that Jojiho did well in Asna when he came in in this last season? Do you really believe Jojiho what? made any 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 progress for you guys? There is no. Let me land no. with this line. Let me land with this line. Yeah, let me land with this line. There is no forward-looking fan, coach, or any soccer analyst that will buy Jojinho with the hope of winning. When you buy Jojinho, it is to be stable. Let me be as I am. Let me not go. You know, I don't want to lose more. I don't want to gain more. Let me just stay as I am. That is what I see in Jojinho. So, please take Kai Harvest. And we can give you money. Uh, uh, Tima, uh, uh, David Lewis helped us now win FA Cup. And he helped uh, Ateta, when Ateta came in, to most of the Arsenal young players, when you ask them who had the best, the people like Saka and the uh, ESL, they, they always talk about the impact that David Lewis had on them. Who bought him when he was already like getting older in his career, but he had a, a big impact in the dressing room. And that year, we won FA Cup. So his, his incoming to Arsenal wasn't a failure. Jorginho, 
he got more red cards than than the number it, of it matches. Matter, I, 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 I'm talking to you because I mean, we're going about five or six red cards in in Man U. was about the best player this season, so that, that doesn't really count. No, those stats doesn't really count. Uh, Dojiho two three years ago was top three in the world. I don't know how all of a sudden he think that he's, he's now a bad player. He played. He no, I need to say something. I need to say something. And he, and he won the Champions League with you. So I don't know how all of a sudden he has become a bad player. Tell me one minute, then before we can move, we already spent a lot of time on Chelsea already. Okay. Yeah, so I, I was just wondering when Chima was talking about, you know, all the bad players they sent down to us, how we haven't learned. Have you ever paused to think about, you know, the whole infamous dressing room problem that Chelsea has been known for there's somewhere like i think something is happening with the psychic of chelsea players that nobody's talking about do you understand seriously because that's what i think you can't tell me okay it's just like when you talked about aspie you're calling aspie old for a club that is fielding silver you can't call aspie old as far as i'm concerned aspie has been one of the greatest players that you guys have for as long as i know I remember that goal he scored against Arsenal. I can't remember how many. I think it was in 2014, 2015, because I was seven. And I was very pissed. I came to watch Chelsea, Arsenal. And he scored a goal. And it was a very mean one. So As Aspi is a very beautiful player. He age has nothing on him. He's going to be one of those evergreen players, if you know what I mean. Seriously. He's going to be like, like what's his name in, in Real Madrid? Luca. Those are the kind of guys you have to start comparing Aspi to. So if we're talking about Chelsea uh, and Arsenal players, you know, this one coming, this one coming. Willan was good when he came. It's not my fault that he's Brazil, didn't Brazil. Okay? So, I mean, come on. Seriously. Okay, so we'll move to Liverpool. Yeah, Liverpool uh, last season had a very, very bad, one of their worst seasons uh, in the last decade, uh, if I, can, I don't know if I'm right, right there. But they are beginning to make some movements in the transfer window. Just yesterday, they confirmed the uh, summer slide and they got uh, McAllister very early in the transfer window. Last year, they got uh, Nunes and uh, oh, which other guy? I've forgotten the other guy's name. It's good, and everybody has been talking about the, the Liverpool midfield. With these two signings, it looks like they have injected some energy in that midfield. Richard, are you as a rival, Liverpool being what I would call in quote the natural top four? Let, let's not talk about changing for the league right now, contender every season. As a rival, are you worried about how strong Liverpool is going to look all of a sudden with these two transfers and probably and one or two more to go? Yeah, they're going to be stronger this year now. There's no doubt about it. And, you know, they obviously have a plan. There's no even the players they let go. It was it was obvious that we even knew before the end of of uh, the season who was going to go. It was so clear. They have a plan, and and you see, going back, I, I don't want to go back to Chelsea, but if you compare how Liverpool have gone about their business to the way Chelsea have gone about their business, at the end of this season, we didn't know which Chelsea players were going to leave. Or. At the end of the Liverpool, at the end of this season, we knew, like I said, we knew precisely the Liverpool players that were going to go. So they have a plan. Um, even even the way that club is run, it is uh, it's impressive. They they know they had a bad season, but nobody panicked. There was no uh, they weren't running around like headless chickens, spending spending six hundred million. Uh, uh, how much? Six hundred million dollars or six hundred million pounds on players that were, uh, you know, not worth that amount of money. I mean, look at how McAllister came in. I mean, that looks like a very good buy. Um, at least if you're talking about value for money. I mean, he's a World Cup winner. He had a really good season, and he cost thirty-five million pounds. Yeah. Compare. Uh, we'll we'll talk about Arsenal later, but. He's a different type of a player to the player, the players we are looking for. But I mean, that's good value. I mean, he's 24 years old, 35 million pounds World Cup winner. I, Liverpool have a plan. I'm like to answer your question. Yeah, I mean, they won't have the season they had last season again. 
<laughs> I can assure you of that. And the uh, another thing is that the players that they bought, the players you were referring to that they bought last last season, would have had a year to uh, sort of acclimatize people like Nunez and um, yes. the other. Yeah, they they would have had time. So so yeah, that that will also be a factor, you know. Also, I I think that um, uh, Firmino going will also it, there'll be less pressure on some of the the boys that they the, the attackers the attackers that they bought because they will know that it, it's it's up to them to actually perform and and find a way into the first team as a uh, successors to the likes of Firmino and Mane that went you know uh, before Firmino. It's all mm. up. It's up to those players now to actually, you know, take a step forward and claim the uh, the first team place that they were actually bought to fill. Yeah. So, so to answer your question, yeah, Liverpool will be a threat. So there's no, there's a, in fact, there's every possibility that uh, a normal service will be resumed. Hopefully, we're not talking about Arsenal yet, but hopefully, Arsenal will now be, you know, a factor also. But I'm, I'm quite sure that Liverpool will be back at the very top end of the Premier League next year. Okay, so uh, as good as what Richard has said at Liverpool sounds, if you were to be a Liverpool fan, what do you what else do you think you what would you expect your club to do in this transfer window to strengthen the squad? Vis-a-vis -vis, uh, at what end of the season last year, the Alexander Arnold was moved into the midfield. But it looks like with this uh, midfield that they are assembling now, he might be going back to his position. And Liverpool defence last season, whatever we can say about the lack of energy in their midfield, they had issues in their defence. So what else do you think a club needs to do to make that team a little bit more formidable to go, go into the scene to compete at the top end of the table? I think they need to strengthen the spine. It still hasn't been strength strengthened. Um, both of us lie and, and McAllister are offensive midfielders. McAllister has a tendency, uh, because of his work rate, to be also defensive to an extent. But he's used to being at the offensive uh, part of the field. You know, they still uh, do not have the midfielder that will sit, uh, be willing to sit, right, and help shield or screen the defense. Right now, it's only Henderson, um, the likes of Thiago Silva, but these guys, again, Henderson is getting yeah. old. What about Fabinho? Right? Fabinho is getting old. You can't, in the current premiership, uh, that's the, you cannot, you can see that in the last two years, Fabinho hasn't been the same Fabinho we've, we've always known. It's just like a United depending on Fred, you know, um, and, um, uh, to an extent, Chelsea, depending on uh, Kante. Kante, if fit, yes, can still perform at that level, but um, injuries and all that affected him. So Liverpool probably still needs to get a dynamic, younger midfielder that has the energy to shield their defense. Right. But then with the way things are going, I think Klopp really experimented with... Um, Arnold. And uh, Trent Arnold being an inverted fullback, and actually Southgate adopted that in the England friendlies. The two friendlies he played for England, he played in the midfield, initially at that, um, inverted, but then almost as a number ten, right? And he performed really well. So in that case, I would say Klopp probably still needs to get a, a right back, or, or maybe another centre back that can play right back. So that sometimes, uh, like Arsenal may be planning to do, he can play three uh, central defenders, just like um, um, our genius uh, Guardiola did a lot last season. Uh, he can play three centre backs, and you know, strong defenders and and a, a strong midfielder in front of them, so that the rest of the team can just do whatever they want to do offensively and bring in goals. So that's what I'm thinking. If I were a pool fan. You know, I would say bringing a centre back that can play right back, or bringing a specialist right back, and and uh, allow Trent get into the midfield. But you still have to get someone that is more defensive minded than offensive uh, in in the midfield. 
And I think they are very good as far as um, the attacking the, the forward options are concerned. Yeah, well, well, I think I agree with you. What, one thing I will also want to mention, watching Liverpool against Arsenal last season and a few of their games, some of their games that I watched, I think uh, Rob, uh, Robertson yes. also yes. defensively is becoming... Yes. Going forward, he still has that energy and mm. kind of ball, but I think defensively as well. Yeah, so I think yes. Liverpool need to do some some more work in their defence. So we'll move to United. Choma, I'll start with you. Chelsea, uh, my United just got Messi Mount from Chelsea. I think they were <laughs> able to round up that deal at 60 million. Between United and Chelsea, who do you think got a better part of that deal? And why? I mean, Chelsea would say, oh, they got rid of him. Since they are the readers of you know, they got rid of Mount, you know, mm. and they are so happy because they've made their money back. But I'm saying United, for me, they got the better deal. They got the Mount because I've always seen Mount. I've always seen him. It's a pity that Chelsea tried to snuff life out of him, you know, choke him out and all of that. But now he's going to be more creative because you hear some United fans talking about, you know, is it that he's going to be a substitute to this person? Is he going to be on the bench? Is he going to do this? I think there's a reason why Ten Hag has Mount in United. And I can't wait to see what he does in that midfield. I can't wait to see him like running circles around Chelsea in their next games to come. So I give it to United. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. And uh, Richard. Yes. I'll go back to you. United, before the end of the season, we here gave David De Gea a contract, reduced a uh, uh, pay cut. Mm -hmm. uh, then last week, I hear they all even went for that. He signed the contract, but United did not sign. Then last week, they went even further to cut the new pay they offered him and told him straight up that he was not going to be, he might be a second choice come next season. If you were a David De Gea or his agent, how would you feel about that approach? And looking in from outside, what do you, what do you think is going on in that, in that managerial room? Well, well, you know, they've said from, and, and if you look at the way um, Ten Hag plays generally, um, he needs a keeper that can play football. De Gea, as good as he is as a shot stopper, is not a footballer and has never been. He's, 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 because he's tenacious and determined, he's, he's improved in that area, but he's still not the type of, uh, of ball-playing goalkeeper that Ten Hag needs. Um, your, your question as to um, uh, what... Uh, what I feel De Gea's reaction will be or how I'd react if put in a similar situation is that I think De Gea is, is, he's realized that uh, this is not the first time it's happened to him. You know, they, 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 they haven't, they, they never uh, went this, this far. I mean, there were, there've been rumors for at least six or seven years that he's going to leave Manchester United. They never went as far as a, uh, um, withdrawing um, a contract mm -hmm. offer that had already been made. But I mean, like I said, six or seven years, there have been these rumors that he hasn't really been um, the keeper that United want. Yeah. Rather, he's the keeper that they have. And because, you know, like I said, he has strengths that, you know, I mean, there's an argument that he's what shot stopping. He's still one of the best in the world. There's if it's you know stopping shots, but so um, I don't think it's a new thing for him. He's uh, what I think he's thirty two or thirty three years old now, which is still young for a keeper. The keeper, yes. Um, yeah, he's still young for a keeper. So in his mind, I'm sure he's like, well, um, let's see, let's see where where it goes. And then you know there are other considerations that we don't see. For all you know, he may be very happy in Manchester. I know he has children. Maybe they're very settled in Manchester. So as far as he's concerned, he's like, well, um, my family is happy here. He's not, he's been earning this 375,000 pounds a week for 
how many years i mean there's a money money isn't everything you, you know there are other considerations so so i i don't think i don't think it will be like a, a deal breaker for him the fact that that uh, they've withdrawn a contract and they've allowed him enter free agency as it were i don't think it will be a deal breaker because you know he 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 knows that um even if um he doesn't remain united's keeper people will he will have uh, clubs that are interested in him and <laughs> there's always saudi arabia <laughs> right <clears throat> So tell me, yeah. uh, Kima, looking in from outside, what did what else do you expect Mayu to do with regards to strengthening their squad? Well, I honestly feel like um, Mayu's problem last season was a problem of psych. I don't know how strong they were psyched up. When I look at Mayu's, when I look at their squad, when I look at their squad, the squad that squad can win any team, any day. Oftentimes, we we look at Mayu, maybe they lose a game, we say they've, the, the Mayu is gone. But whenever they meet the likes of City, the likes of Arsenal, last season's Arsenal, you know, Arsenal is uh, the likes of uh, Liverpool, that Mayu, that, men that mental toughness of Mayu, you always show up, you know. So I don't want us to, you know, to wave up my you with a you know with a wave of hand because I believe that 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 what they suffered last year was maybe they need somebody to psych them up to understand who they really are. But if I may digress from your question and speak about um about the deal between Mayu and uh, Chelsea, I've always told people Mason Mount is a good player. But what is his mental strength? We've never really known his mental strength. He is not a first choice in English uh, in English national team. You know, if I if I can honestly tell you, Chelsea got the better deal on the issue of a uh, Messi Mount uh, trade with Manu. Except going to a new environment and seeing competition, he's able to, you know, to live up to. Who is he going to bench? I, I, you know, let's look at let's look at their their midfield. Messi man does even mark. He's not like I don't want to write. I don't want to. I, I don't want to um, run run him down because my Arsenal friends would be like, you know, when we get rid of players, we we water them down and all those things, you know. He is gone. We wish him well. But if, coming to to Mayu, he has to buckle up, strengthen his toughness, his mental toughness, for him to get into um into the the, the you know first level. Then speaking about uh, the keeper, um, the hill. I don't know. I had I, I I noticed that Manu was asking for this inter Inter Milan's on on Inter Milan's uh, keeper. I don't know in my own assessment is I I know that Onona Onona is a, a you know a good ball juggler. He jogs the ball. He plays with you know. Oftentimes you will, you will even see him overlap with the ball even above you know he moves the ball over his defenders and defenders and you see him getting to the midfield before he releases the ball. But I really don't think one-on-one, -on -one, Onona is a better keeper than the Hill. The Hill, I believe, one-on-one -on -one with the striker, the Hill will, stops the, will stop the ball more than Onona. So if they are throwing, you know, 10 is, 10 is a, you know, he knows he has seen these players, he has seen them in dressing rooms, he's seen them in, in training sections. So he knows what he's looking for. But I will gladly take the hill to Chelsea. That's my submission. Okay, fair enough. Let's go to sports. Uh, Ubum, Bayern Munich looks like they're very serious about Harry Kane. Mm -hmm. If you're a Harry Kane, and looking back at Tukor's uh, 
career, let's assume the recent one, PSG and uh, and Chelsea. Will you be looking to, you know, going for that deal? Or would you want to stay back in sports, watch and see if United will get taken over by the by the Saudi group, probably have the finances to come with you, mm. or run down your contract as sports and be a free agent by next season? Try to to beat the Alan Shira in the premiership record. You know, so what if you're a hurricane right now, if you have to advise him, what, what do you think you should do about it? His position this season. Your question is a very nice one, um, and I think all things considered, the, the decision has to be an informed one. If he's going to stay back at, at Tottenham, hoping that that United will get taken over, United is going to get taken over. There's no doubt about that. The problem is the timing. Now. That's why we have back channels. We have confidential discussions. He would have to get 100% guarantee from United that they're going to come in for him. You know, before he will, for the, he will turn down Bayern Munich. Because yes, Tuchel is at is, is a Bayern Munich, but you know, with Bayern Munich, just like many of this, not many of just like uh, this biggest biggest echelon of clubs. You know they can get rid of coaches uh, at any time. Tuchel, you may go there mid-season. If Tuchel is not winning, they'll get rid of him. So you think about the club and think about their profile and think about everything, including the coach that that brought you in leaving. You have to consider all that before moving. So Bayern Munich is a big enough club. The Harry Kane is a big enough player to play for successive coaches. At, at Bayern Munich. And so I think he should seriously consider this because in addition to winning Bundesliga, he has a chance of winning the Euro UEFA Champions League with Bayern Munich uh, because they, of course, we know how formidable they are with, with recruitment and the players they hire and all that. So he has a really bright chance to leave the, the UK, go to another country, play in the league, win the league, and win the Champions League, and um, make a name for him for himself in addition to what he's achieved so far. Otherwise, he can gain that assurance from United. If that's, I, I would say if the assurance is there that they'll come for him, I would say he, he, he that is good enough for him to you know, turn Bayern Munich down and stay. But, but if, if I, that assurance is not... If I hear you well, if there's mm -hmm. a United on the table... Yes. And there's a Bayern Munich on the table. You're saying it should take United. And if it does, what would that what would be the implication of this this the quality of United as against competing against Arsenal? We'll be worried about no, 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 I'm I'm analyzing. I'm I'm not analyzing as an Arsenal fan. I'm analyzing but as I'm saying, a saying they have so, two questions two questions. The first one, yeah, you say if it's United and Bayern Munich to choose, you should choose United. And I'm saying yes. if that comes to pass as an Arsenal fan. How do you see United's strength competing against them next season? No, it's a different. That is a different matter altogether. Now, as an Arsenal fan, I would say he should go to Inter Milan or or Barcelona or Real Madrid or no, Borussia no, Dortmund. No, did, did you understand me? Or Bayern no, Munich. He, two he should go away from the Premiership. No, That's the point different, I'm making. I'm trying to make a point. The first one mm -hmm. is that if forget about Arsenal, but okay. even those two deals. You think the best yes. one for him is to go to United? Yes, I think the best one for him to, is to go to United for two reasons. Number one is he's he he, he would take uh, uh, United to the next level. The next level means consistent trophies, you know, both at the local level and at the European level. Because United, for all their 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 shenanigans and all their their problems that they have, they have a solid squad, just like Chairman alluded to when he was speaking earlier. They have a solid team, right? They are just missing one or two things, here, including a, a, a proper goal scorer. With a proper goal scorer in that United squad and the options they have, they're going to win a lot more games than they won last season. And they, they have a, a solid coach as well. So he would definitely be a difference maker for them, right? Um, and he would also have the chance to 
get the record that he's seeking to get beyond the Alan Shearer playing in the UK, right? But the no no is do not stay in 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 Tottenham for his for, for the sake of his career. Now that's as a neutral fan. The second question is as an Arsenal fan, I need him out of the EPL altogether. I don't want to see him again, uh, except maybe we bump into him in Europe because that guy has really haunted us now. Every time we play against Tottenham, uh, uh, Hurricane scores. So for him to go to United will spell trouble for Arsenal primarily and for the rest of the Premiership, right? So that's my answer for the two questions. Okay, uh, Richard, we hear what Ugum said. I think uh, all of us here yeah, agree with him on that. If you are a Hurricane and Tottenham just went and got James Madison, is it enough to show you that probably they're beginning to do things differently or bring quality that can help you succeed in sports? Will it, is it bigger? It's good enough to make you to want to stay in sports? No. To answer your <laughs> to answer your question in one word, no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so what has I, it, I don't what, what does that need to do to 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 persuade Harry Kane to stay back in, in sports? Because it looks like that that they leave, he doesn't want him to leave. They they have to um, um, solve all the issues they clearly have, or they clearly had last season. Um, some of them, some of them were not just players, and some of them were, you know, internal in that somebody like Son, for example, just didn't play as well as um, you know he normally plays. I mean, I think part of that was uh, maybe a holdover from that injury that he he suffered before the World Cup. You know, he he just, he just didn't have a you know, he had a season that was like acceptable by most people's standards, but by his, it, it was a bad season. Um, also, their goalkeeping situation is a joke. I, I don't understand. What's yeah, going I on think there. they are looking at a new. I can't remember the name of. Oh, they bought him. They bought a keeper, but I don't know him. They bought a keeper from uh, from Serie A. Yeah, one with Mario. Yeah, I can't remember. And they they just sold Harry Wings to Leicester. I think that deal was concluded today or yesterday. So it looks yes. like they are also making some movements to stabilize the sport. So that we, if that would be enough to persuade Hurricane to stay, you know, we we'll live to. But the way he, got, he was on loan, he was on loan last. He didn't play for Tottenham last season. Okay, yeah, yeah, but at least he's, he's not coming back. He's, he's living. Yeah, there. but I mean, it make that makes no difference to uh what happened to how. Time? Yes, no. So so um, well, I I mean, it's still very early. When you think about it, do you know that? You know the uh, the window actually only opened today, so it's actually still really early. But having said that, I mean, uh, 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 a lot of these deals they take a long time to actually um, uh, uh, get over they the do, line. Yeah. So, if you have, so if you haven't started now, I mean, you know, it, it's and you know how normally you hear um, deals that are are serious. You you start hearing about them. You know, before the season, uh, yeah, 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 yes, and we haven't heard. Uh, well, I haven't heard anything that if I was Harry Kane would encourage me to stay at Tottenham. You know, I mean, I think the only reason he'd stay is that, uh, I mean, he's uh, he has some sort of um, uh, of yeah. attachment, yes, that's the only reason he'd stay, you know. But, but if it's if it's to answer your question, it doesn't look like, um, uh, the management, the ownership of Tottenham are Seriously. doing things differently. From, Madison is not a, a particularly um, ambitious Seriously. buyer. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't look... I mean, like I, told, I, I said in our last episode of this uh, Fan Fiesta, uh, Leicester had good enough squad to, for those players to rally themselves and get themselves out of yeah. that relegation. And for with players like Madison, and they couldn't do it, that means, that it, like Tim, I was mentioning earlier on, the mentality probably is not strong enough to drive any team to to success. Okay, so, so we'll move to us now, the big one, and we'll round off from there. Ukuma, I'll start with you. When nobody saw Kai Havertz deal to us now, you know, being a possibility, all of a sudden from nowhere, he showed up within two weeks, that deal was complete, completed. Over the, the last week, uh, Ateta was 
speaking to a Spanish uh, media, and he said he made a very, very interesting comment about Kai Havertz. Because everybody has been asking, what is he coming to us now? Is he going to be a striker? Is he going to be a winger? And even we here on this show, we have talked about it before, before that comment was made by Ateta. And it looks like he said that it's going to bring difference in our midfield and variety to our entire play. So looking at that comment, what do you think? Are you able to mirror Ateta's uh, intentions with Kahavas, looking at his qualities? Um, <laughs> you know, one thing, one thing I, I, I should warn everybody about Mikel Ateta is that he's a very uh, measured man, especially with the press. Whatever he tells you with the press, please don't take it hook, line, and sinker, and don't take it that. I mean, he that the guy, the guy is preparing his ground. He knows that people will run with that mention of the name midfield. <laughs> you know, yes, and you know that he keeps his plans to his chest while saying what he wants to say in the press, right? So I don't see again Kai Havers playing for Arsenal in the midfield. In some games he may, um, but people, I, I I was listening to someone today, uh, uh, someone on, on YouTube talking about the midfield of uh, Declan Rice. Uh, Odegaard and Kai Havers and saying that it's too lightweight. Um, and I 100% agree. And I don't think Ateta is going to play that midfield. You know, he's, he's smarter than that, right? <laughs> so people thinking that um, Havers is just going to replace Shaka if Shaka leaves and uh, he will just play a midfield of Havers, uh, Odegaard and Declan Rice. That will not work in the Premiership with the way the Premiership is constituted unless Havas turns into what he's never been. And that's a defensive-minded, you know, offensive player. You know, so he will need some training if he will eventually get there. For now, I don't think that that's going to be the plan. Which brings me to where I think he will play. I think he will, he will be an option on both flanks, on both wings, right? Either coming in, from the left, or coming in from the right, depending on who's playing, either Saka or Martinelli, he's just he just gives you a variety of options. But as a midfielder, call midfielder, I don't think he's going to be an option. I don't know what others think. Hey, man, let me go to you before I come to to Choma. From the outside, as a Chelsea fan watching us, I know you watch a lot of Arsenal games because we are rivals. Oh. Granit Xhaka, probably last season was his sixth or seventh season at Arsenal. He has played under three or four different coaches before he played under Ateta. And last season, you can correctly say that Arsenal signed a brand new player in the person of Granit Xhaka. Exactly. Yeah. I remember one of the interviews that he granted, he said at the end of the season before last, Ateta told him that he was going to change his position in the team and move him forward. And these are the things that he needed him to understand and prepare himself, or he might not have a place in the team. He took up that challenge, walked at Teta, and got himself to become any game that he doesn't play. Arsenal fans are like, what happened to Xhaka? Two days ago, Pepe got an interview, had a very long statement, and talked about how Ateta spoke to him when he, Ateta arrived what he wanted him to do, things, I even gave him special sessions with assistants to understand what he was expecting him to do in the team. I think Pepe could not live up that, but that's why he's on loan. Don't you have any glimmer of hope or expectation that Ateta probably will be able to extract a Kahava that Chelsea could not get? Okay, um, thank you for this question. You see, like um, somebody talked about Chelsea's culture here. Arsenal also has a culture. I want you to cast your mind back on players that have mounted midfield for Arsenal all through, you know, all through these years. I want you to look at um, my favorite, Fabregas. I want you to look at... Um, 
this uh, Poland Jam Jam German guy. What is that? I've forgotten it, that play for him? What's his name? Ozil. Ozil. Okay. Then there is this English. Uh, what's his name? This English. Uh, um, English young boy that plays left. What is his name? That's Wisher. Wisher. Then look at um, Odegaard. There is, you see all these players that I've mentioned, they have one thing in common. Post touch. They have perfect post touch. Their first touch, whenever you cross the ball, their first touch is first touch. They learn how to hold the ball, talk to the ball, and move with the ball. Zaka, that, you know, that all of a sudden, people are seeing Kahav are seeing Kahavas in Zaka. He has first touch. He can carry the ball. He can give you the ball, come and get it from you. You know, what? I, the reason I'm saying this is, you know, I, I love football. And I love good football. Now, I always tell people that Asna is like the team. Asna is like those days of Osno uh, 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 Okocha when he came into Nigeria national team during the days of Yakini. When JJ, when JJ holds the ball, Yakini will move. JJ will raise his leg and he will bring it back. Asna played good football before now without purpose. I tell people that is a high school. You know, they shine and at the end of the day they whistle out. But this last season, I saw something in Arsenal that I've never seen before, which is purposeful. They play to win. You have Jesus in the front. You have um, um, this boy, what is his name? This uh, Nigerian little the, the boy. Saka. Saka in the front. So when, 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 you, when you mentioned Kahavas and mentioned a midfielder in Arsenal team, what will he do? He can't even carry the ball. You see this one-on-one, -on -one, give me and I give you back. I don't see him do that. You say, okay, he's going to come from, from left flank. Have you truly really seen Harvest hold the ball, cross it, like cross the ball to somebody who's going to nod it in, or even have one-on-one? -on -one. I'm not trying to, you know, kill him. I'm, 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 I'm not going for a kill, but I'm just trying, you know, to also enjoy this game of football, you know. So I am hoping to see what this magic. Tete. Okay, but before you before you finish, then we'll go to the next question. Okay. Chelsea paid seventy five million for Carvers. Then he was playing in uh, Bayern Leverkusen. Right. Did you, did you by chance remember? What your performance was when well, that made just to pay seventy five million? Yes, you know, you know. Oftentimes, we always compare this low league, low leagues, countries with English league. Yami is not low league. I know, but remember that um, this other guy that what is this, this other German guy that uh, Chelsea bought also that came to Chelsea that went back. What is his name again? Yeah, this guy that uh, huh? Timo Werner. Timo Timo, 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 Timo. Timo was also scoring like that. You know, when you see all these guys that play in these leagues in in Germany, after um, Bayern Munich and the and um, Dortmund. Dortmund, Dortmund, every other person is you know, even the first ten, the first ten English league teams will beat the the, the rest. You know what I'm saying? So most of these players, Carvers was good in Germany, but he has. We've seen him where there is competition. He chickened out. I'm sorry to say he chickened out. Okay, you know, well, well, let's not spend too much time on that. But don't forget that we also, uh, when we started this this uh, uh, episode, we mentioned so many Chelsea players who have not performed in the last two, three seasons. And they were all doing well wherever they came from, even the ones that came from England. So, well, let, uh, the Cahavas uh, uh, Colondrum. Has remained in, in every episode. Anywhere you talk, they talk about Arsenal these days, it comes up. There's, there's, there seems to be no winner or loser until even some Arsenal, even some Arsenal ex players. Sorry to cut you. Some Arsenal ex players are con they are con confused. Exactly. That, that's what I'm saying. No, nobody is. No, everybody is waiting to see what's going to happen. But for me, as an Arsenal fan, I'm in the same circle. But I have one glimmer of hope. That Mikel Arteta, all the players that he has asked for, 
He has asked for them for a reason. And 90% of the time, they have worked. So I'm hanging my own point. Let me ask you, in your opinion, sorry, if I'm, in your opinion, what will be his position in your own opinion? Kai Havertz, I said it in my the last episode, is a very intelligent footballer. He might seem like a desica or slow, but he's very, very intelligent in space. He knows how to take important positions. When Chelsea played Arsenal last summer, I watched the game live. He caught his head. I didn't recognize him. He was the only player that I was worried about watching that game because I was behind Arsenal, Arsenal uh, going to keeper. That's why we were sad. I kept looking and said, who is this new player that just signed? Because the guy who was disturbing the Arsenal defense without the ball, he was picking some kind of very, very, you know, hurting positions around that place. So, so for me, I feel, and I thought I mentioned that too when he was talking, I feel I thought I had discovered that and if Arsenal is able, unlike Chelsea, to get the ball to that guy on time, because there's this word used in football, transition. If that if I have a place in a team that has quick transition, he will hurt teams. So basically, you think he's going to be an, a striker for Arsenal? Not really a striker. This guy, Ateta, a, the way Arsenal plays right now, will play with fluidity. Right, even Jesus was talking about doesn't stay up top. He comes to the middle, then uh, Saka and Martinelli run behind him. That's why they have 15 goals apiece last season. So I I'm still intrigued to find out how Ateta. I mean, Ateta is one coach that is always adapting him, just like Pep Guardiola. This season he has gone for. Uh, we're going to go to him now, Timber. The shape of Arsenal team this season might not be exactly what it was last season. Remember that at the time, it looked as if teams have worked out Arsenal. So I, I know Ateta is going to do something about the shape of the team going into this season. And probably that change is going to be around Kai Havertz. That is why he went for him. That's, I'm, just, I'm not saying that's what it's going to be, but we just wait and we see. And we go to uh, Timba. Choma, I see you smiling. Uh, during Timba has been... Touted and there's been so much noise about the guy's talent, his abilities, his skill sets, his technical ability. <laughs> and it, it looks it looks to be a very, very good deal for us now for 42 million euros. What's your impression about that deal? And what do you think is going to bring to the Arsenal team? Well, um, I think I've I've had this conversation with somebody earlier today. So there's something about him that makes me really comfortable. You know, I think I, I finally went back and saw some clips of, you know, his magic and what he can do behind. I'm very comfortable and I think he's worth everything we're paying for him. At least he's going to be helping out, seeing that we still need some time before Sally comes back. You know, so I think I think he's a very good um, input. I think he's going to do the job. I'm, I'm very excited for him actually think he's a good fit. And just like you said, uh, Ateta is cooking a lot of things that most of the Arsenal fans don't even know. Exactly. Yeah. So, Richard, let's talk to you for about the declarized deal. Do you see it as a level raiser for Arsenal? And what impact do you think is going to make in the Arsenal team? Um, yeah, well, you know, Yes, I think he will have a positive impact, but you see, that has to be um, allied with there. There, there are people that we shouldn't look at it as he's uh, he comes in and uh, um, he's like the only the, the major um, holding midfielder we have. I, I mean, I want a situation where he's come in and. He's actually making the existing squad stronger. I, do, I don't want, for example, I don't want Thomas Party to leave. No, me too. I'm with you on that. I, I, I think that, uh, yeah, his form dipped towards the end of the season. But, I mean, that could have been fatigue. It could have been all sorts of things. The personal problems that, uh, uh, um, you know, he had. All those things could be a factor, and I, I believe that uh, 
and he's still not i think he's barely 30 so he's too young to be like uh put on the scrap heap as it were so so i i, I think if um Jaka goes fine but um declan rice is not by himself is not uh the solution to arsenal's um problem of of uh um, strengthening their squad, Clinton, which yeah. is it, it's that lack of squad strength that cost us the mm -hmm. Premier League title. So, I, I think basically to answer your question once again, um, Declan Rice by himself, yes, he's a good player. I mean, obviously, he's going to be of great benefit to to Arsenal Football Club, but that's not it, it's not just the purchase of Declan Rice with nothing more that is going to make us stronger than we were last season and in a better position to uh, challenge Manchester City and the other teams that I'm sure, like I said earlier, Liverpool, for example, um, even Chelsea. I mean, it's possible because I have... Um, I, I believe in uh, Pochettino's ability to actually um, 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 deal with uh, top end uh, professional football teams that 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 that's the difference between him and somebody like uh, Potter you know Potter was basically learning on the job I mean he was a good coach I know we're not talking about Chelsea now and I'm digressing rather uh, a bit but I think you can understand the points I'm making so yeah to answer your question Declan Rice yes um, um, a, a good buy obviously he will be of benefit to the club but if people are looking at him as, you know, this one hundred and five million pound buy that will just uh, uh, solve all Arsenal's uh, holding midfield problems, no, it won't happen. Okay, there are other so things. Yeah, I'll have the uh, last two questions for everybody. This one, everybody will give me their what their take is. But before we do that, our viewers, I want to remind you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Like and share this video and get busy in the comment section. We well, have had some heated uh, conversations today. Let's know your your view on some of this issue we talked about, especially about Chelsea, Kai Havertz, and uh, uh, trans some other tra transfer deals. So okay, let me ask this question. If Thomas Partey is to stay back at Arsenal, Arsenal get, get the, 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 the declarized deal over the line, sign Jordan Timber and Kai Havertz, and probably do maybe one or two more deals before the transfer window. My question is, is Arsenal ready to win trophies? Chima, let's start with you. Well, thank you. I honestly feel like Arsenal, Arsenal did well last season. So these acquisitions they are making, you know, if he's not broken, don't fix. That's the way I see life. You know, if Arsenal will, that's why, I, you know, when I, when I stay, I laugh. The reason I laugh sometimes is, I see us not trying to mess up themselves by themselves. You know, if I were in Arsenal, if I were to advise the coach, you know, last season you Arsenal did very well that they needed to strengthen maybe the one or two attackers, very good attackers. You know, Party is a very good player. I wish I wish you guys would lose Party to us. You know, no, but no, but um, good luck to Arsenal for acquiring players that they don't need. Let's see how the season <laughs> turns out. That's so what I'm going to say. Thomas, so with Pate staying back, having the Glarice added to the squad in Jordan Timber and Kai Havas, do you confidently say Asna is ready to win one or two trophies this coming season? Yeah, we've been ready since yesterday. Yeah, we've been ready. We were ready last season. At least you saw all the work we put in. So, yeah, we're more ready this season, actually. Richard, what's the answer to that question? Yeah, uh, uh, with the caveats that we've discussed. Yeah, we, we, yes, everybody's a year older. When you think of how young the team is, they would have learned from what happened last season. This season just passed. They would have learned. I mean, it would be a massive lesson. And um, I, I can't imagine that they'd be in a similar situation next season and they would let it go. Assuming those um, those uh, improvements that we've suggested are made, you know, yeah. So I'm I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic. 
I um, echo the sentiments of both Chioma and, and Richard. I look, I'm looking forward to a good season. We definitely have a better squad now than we had last season. We still have the same coach, the same spine. Um, Chima mentioned Thomas Pate. I'm really hopeful that he's not going to leave because he's a very key member uh, in addition to Shaka of, of our team. And if Shaka is going to leave... Hopefully, Pate is going to stay and, and keep our, our spine, you know, really strong while we integrate the new guys into the team. Um, uh, but something tells me that our business is not done yet. Uh, there's somebody actually, a, a close friend of mine that's been in an Arsenal fan for a very long time in the UK, sent me a text message earlier this morning and said that I shouldn't be surprised if Arsenal brings in a, a, a surprise name later in the window. And by surprise name, he specifically said that they are going after two of the world's most popular strikers, that they've actually contacted the camps of those players. He mentioned the players, I started laughing. But, well, you know... I want to assume that I have mentioned to you before and you laughed at me. Yeah, yes, and I laughed at you. Yes. And I keep laughing, you know. He <laughs> mentioned... Victor Simen and Kylian Mbappe, Mbappe. specifically. Mbappe. Right. Um, I so I, I, I think uh, Chema is laughing. Yeah, Chema, that's, that's my, that was my reaction. But I mean, we live in a world where anything can with happen. The, football. With, 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 Mbappe, with Mbappe come. No, no, Chima, let's, let's again, <laughs> again, let's leave that. Him. Let's leave that discussion for another. Exactly. So, so in the long and with all my rig, my rolling, the point is that I, I feel more confident, right? Uh, for next season than uh, the previous season because I believe in the, the, our coach. Our coach knows what he's doing. The club seems to be pulling the, in the same direction. We've had a, a better summer than we've had in the past 15 years, right, in terms of bringing in quality players. So there's cause for optimism. Yeah, I think uh, what, for the reasons that you all have given, I will say yes as well. One thing I will add is I've watched Ateta closely. He hardly repeats mistakes. If Arsenal find himself in the same situation, I don't think you. One of the major mistakes, or let me say, uh, but when he was asked the, why, the reason why he lost to Chelsea in the finals the year before the one that he won, he said he made a mistake. He said it wasn't a mistake. He made a different decision. I think Ateta realized late that Kivio could do a better job than than Rob Holding. Kivio now has had some game experience, EPL game experiences you know, behind his back. So by next season, he's a more ready player to come in when it's needed. And I think Ateta will make different decisions going forward. So for these reasons, I feel as now is ready to win trophies. The last question for us to close is, this one is probably going to be a little bit uh, controversial or deba debated. Between Man City, Man City, Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, there's no point mentioning sports. Who do you think, if the season we are to start today, has a better midfield? Anybody can go. City. City. Of course. Of course. Yes. Okay, let's say City. Okay, let's take City out of it. Let's say because this was there in another world. But, but it can't even do that. It can't even do that because not a lot been at the receiver and the good guy. They have a lot. They have a lot right now. They are still there. They are still there. Okay, City. Yeah, City. Let's say the best two midfield. I think. I think Arsenal. The introduction of this arise. He's not joined yet. Huh? He hasn't joined yet. No, no, well, no, 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 but put him there. Put him yes, there. because he's, you know, yeah, let's, you know, if let's Arsenal is there. able to pull it through, I think Arsenal will, you know, my problem with Arsenal, hmm. apart from, you know, okay, we're talking about midfield, because yeah. Arsenal. Yeah, just the midfield. Arsenal. I think Arsenal. <laughs> Ogun, what's your take on that? Ah, uh, he... I would say Arsenal and Liverpool definitely. United, their, their midfield isn't 
It's not up to scratch. Yeah, I thought they no, bought Messi just... Mount. Is that Messi Mount not the superstar? Choma called her. Called, called, <laughs> Messi, they bought Messi from us. Leave it alone. Choma, what's your take? Who who has the best midfield? Let's say the best two midfield among these uh, six, six uh, or five teams. Okay, just to make sure that Chima sleeps well tonight, I'll go with United. Because of Messi Mount. <laughs> okay, no, I want to, you know, let's, you know, don't, uh, you know, be to our, to our, to our, our listeners, you know, be be to them. <laughs> not, you know. Come on, I'll go with Arsenal, actually. Arsenal. Why, why do you say yeah. that? Come on. I mean, Richard said it. We, I mean, Rice is on, on his way. So you might as well just, just say what he said. I think it's one of one of you know the best things to happen in the middle. Yeah, I think uh, if Declarice joins, I think he's the best signing. He is the best signing in of any team in this season for me. So far, yeah, yeah, so far we can say that. Okay, guys, when it's been a very lively, debative uh, episode today, Choma, thank you for <laughs> adding spice <laughs> to the the conversation. You and Choma really. We really uh, enjoyed your <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> your banter. So our viewers, before we go, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so. Like and share this video. Let the word go out there. We have had some controversial conversations. Let's hear your opinion, your view on some of these uh, things we discussed. We'll still be looking in the next couple of weeks. We'll come back again and look at the businesses that these uh, teams have done. And obviously, by then, we'll start playing some preseason games. We'll be looking at them as well. We'll bring you content from some of the venues. Like I said earlier in the past, we're going to be live at uh, in New York. As now playing against uh, Man United. We'll be in LA to bring you content too as well from the As now against uh, Baka. Then we'll be at NRG Stadium in Houston as well. The game between Real Madrid and uh, Man United. So look forward to those content uh, as they, they drop. Thank you guys for, for this episode and we will be back again. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.